So BeQuad's new flagship, the DarkBase Pro 901 is here. It's not cheap in the UK, it's going to set you back around about £320. But should this be your next case, let's take a closer look. To remove the tempered glass panel, there's two captive thumb screws at the back and once they've been loosened, the panel can be slid backwards and lifted away. The other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. If we take a look at the side panel we've just removed, you'll notice that there's lots of noise dampening material on the back of it. And as well, we've got a perforated mesh area indicating that we're going to be able to mount fans or radiators at the side of the case. Taking a look at our front dial, we've got a separate headphone and microphone jack. We've got four USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, and a power button. We've also got buttons to control the case's built-in fan controllers. This can be from 1 to 5 bars, where 1 bar will give you 400 revs per minute, whereas 5 bars will give you 1900 revs per minute. And there's also the option to sync this up and allow the motherboard to control the fan speed. Over on the other side of the front panel, we've got the button to control the case's built-in ARGB lighting strip. And this runs on both the front and the side panel. One of the buttons cycles through the different modes, while the other button controls the different colours. Again, there's the option to sync things up with the motherboard by pressing the sync button. And there's a nice display showing you what the current ARGB effect is. There's also nice lighting effects around the front I.O., although unfortunately this is fixed to white and you can't change it with the buttons. Just behind our front I.O. we've got a 15 watt wireless charger. Out of the box the case comes with an aluminium front panel with lots of sound dampening material on the back. Despite the solid front panel, there still should be plenty of air getting in to the case from the front, as the side of the front panel has large perforated areas on both sides. If you want even more airflow, there is a mesh panel in the case accessory box. The case's front panel can simply be pulled off from the bottom, and behind this you'll notice we've got a separate dust filter. With the dust filter removed, you can see the case comes with two 140mm Silence Wings PWM fans pre-installed at the front of the case. They're on a removable fan stroke radiator bracket, and there's simply four thumb screws you need to loosen to remove the bracket. It's a pleasant surprise when you remove the bracket to discover that the fans are plugged in to a built-in fan hub on the actual bracket. You notice there's gold connectors on the bracket and they make contact with gold connectors on the front of the case connecting the fans up. On the front of the case you're going to be able to fit up to four 140mm fans or up to a 420mm radiator. On the top of the case we've got a mesh panel, it's just a simple matter of pushing down at the front to free it up and then it can be lifted up and away. You'll see at the top of the case we've got more noise dampening material and this is optional whether you leave this in. Obviously if you are wanting to have fans or radiators at the top of the case you're going to have to remove it. With the noise dampening material removed you'll notice we've got another fan stroke radiator bracket at the top of the case. Again it's held on with four thumb screws and when we remove it you'll notice that there's another PWM hub attached to it. And on each of the fan hubs you're going to be able to plug in three fans. On the top of the case you're going to be able to fit up to three 140mm fans or up to a 360mm radiator. At the rear of the case we've got another 140mm Silent Wings 4 PWM fan. Although if you prefer you can mount up to 140mm radiator at the rear. In terms of other fan mounting locations it is possible to mount up to three 120mm fans or up to a 360mm radiator on the side of the case. To do this you are going to have to change out the side bracket. It is possible to mount up to a 140mm fan on the bottom of the case. To do this you are going to have to remove the hard drive cage at the bottom and also the full length dust filter at the bottom of the case. To direct the air up to the GPU you can remove the solid panel at the front of the power supply stride and replace it with a vented one. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to EATX and if you want to go with the CPU air cooler the maximum height supported is 190mm. We've got full length cutouts on three sides of the motherboard and over to the right hand side of the motherboard we've got a cable cover bracket for an ATX motherboard. Although if you want to go with an EATX motherboard be quite have still got you covered with an EATX cable cover bracket in the box. Another really cool feature of this case is the motherboard tray is removable. There's two screws at the front and two at the back and once you've removed these the whole motherboard tray can slide out on rails at the side. This is then going to allow you to do a lot of your assembly outside the case giving you improved access for the build. At the rear of the case we've got eight horizontal PCI expansion slots and the maximum length of graphics card supported is 495 millimeters. If you prefer to install your graphics card in the vertical position it is possible to rotate the PCI expansion slot brackets round by 90 degrees giving you eight vertical slots in the case where you should be able to get your graphics card nicely centered between your motherboard and the front tempered glass panel. 
The riser cable that you're going to need isn't included with the case, but BQAT do offer a riser cable which attaches to the bottom of the case magnetically as an optional extra. If you do want to mount your graphics card in the horizontal position, it's going to be well supported with a really nice GPU support bracket. One of the nice features of this bracket is that it is designed to hide your PCIe cables in the bracket itself. Moving to the rear of the case and cable management is well catered for here. We've got lots of metal brackets around the motherboard to hold your cables in and plenty of Velcro cable straps included in the case accessory box. Cable routing space also looks to be pretty good. In terms of drive mounting support, we've got two dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting brackets behind the motherboard. As well, we've got a hard drive cage at the front of the case and this contains two hard drive trays. In each of these drive trays, you're gonna be able to either install a three and a half inch drive, which does install toollessly, or up to two two and a half inch drives. If that's not enough storage for you, it is possible to mount up to a further five drive trays in the main body of the case. There's some plastic panels on the side panel that you need to remove, and then you're gonna simply be able to slot a drive tray into place before securing it with a thumb screw. And the fact that BeQuiet have coated the drive trays in the same black plastic material as the rest of the case really helps it to blend in with the rest of the case. In the case accessory box, we get this optional panel, which is going to hide all your hard drives. Another option you have in this case is to mount a five and a quarter inch drive at the front of the case. The bottom of the front panel simply folds down and the bracket that you're going to need to install is included in the case accessory box. The only design side to do in this is you are going to have to remove the hard drive cage, although as we've mentioned, you can move those drive trays up into the main body of the case. And also you're not going to be able to mount a fan at the bottom of the case with a five and a quarter inch drive installed. In terms of power supplies, the case supports full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 288 millimeters. And it's good to see we've got a separate power supply bracket on the back of the case. It is also possible to invert the case and you may find this particularly useful if you want to have the case on the left hand side of your desk, meaning that you are going to be able to look in through the timber glass panel and see your build. Now what I want to do is give you a closer look at the build I've put together in the case. Take a look at our temperatures with just the stock case fans installed and our i7-13700K being cooled by a Dark Rock Pro 4. So our CPU idled at 42 degrees and reached a maximum 99 degrees during a 10 minute IDA64 stability test with all components in the system being stressed. It is important to mention that it was up to 25% thermal throttling during that test. Our ROG Strix RTX 4080 idled at 30 degrees and reached a maximum of 64 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, with all fans running on the standard motherboard fan curves, there was an average noise level of 30 decibels at idle and 48 decibels under load. So the first thing to say is our CPU did significantly thermal throttle during the IDA64 stability test, but that isn't a big surprise to me. It quite often thermal throttles with a 360 millimeter AIO installed on it. The IDA64 stability test is a really extreme test, which is absolutely miles away from normal use. And using the PC for gaming, our CPU temperature ran between 65 and 75 degrees, with our GPU running at 48 degrees. The other thing to point out is that the noise levels, particularly the idle noise of only 30 decibels, are excellent. And that's actually uh, ties the quietest PC that I have ever built in the past. And that was another Be Quiet case with exactly the same air cooler in it. So it runs very quiet at idle. And the other thing that you could do if you want it even quieter, use the buttons in the front of the case to bring the fan speed down to one, which is gonna give you 400 revs per minute. And that brought the idle noise level down to 28 decibels. So the first thing I wanted to test was replacing the solid front panel with the mesh panel. Take a look at the temperatures. This didn't really give us any significant difference to our CPU temperatures, although our GPU temperatures came down by one degree, both in idle and under load. In terms of the noise levels, the mesh panel was one decibel louder at idle, but one decibel quieter under load. So leaving the mesh panel on at the front, I removed the noise dampening material from the top of the case. 
And the only difference this gave us was it brought our CPU temperatures at idle down by one degree. So looking at the results, if you want to go with a silence focus build, there doesn't seem to be a big problem having a solid panel on the front. There seems to be enough air getting in the side of the front panel. And the noise dampening material at the top of the case also doesn't make that big of a difference. Next thing to test was adding a 140mm light wings fan in at the bottom of the case set to intake. The only difference in terms of our temperatures was our GPU actually idled one degree hotter with the bottom intake fan installed. Although the bottom intake fan did bring an extra two decibels of noise under load. So this is very similar to what I found in a lot of other cases where they do give you the option to have that fan down at the bottom. I haven't really found in any case it makes a significant benefit in terms of temperatures. And given in this case there are some sacrifices to doing it, you're not going to be able to install a five and a quarter inch drive at the front and you're going to have to remove your hard drive cage to do it. Um, it adds more noise and doesn't give you any benefits in terms of temperatures. So my advice is I would definitely leave this fan out. Now if you did want to add an extra fan in, there is some other locations you could do it. And the next thing I wanted to test was adding the 140mm light wings fan in at the front. So we had three 140mm fans at the front set to intake. And because the bottom 140mm fan was dipping down into the hard drive and power supply compartment, I did use the vented panel on the power supply shroud. So installing the extra fan at the front, our CPU idled 2 degrees cooler. Although this did come at the expense of more noise and there was an extra 2 decibels of noise at idle and 1 decibel of noise under load. Next thing I wanted to test was leaving the three 140mm fans at the front. I added an additional 140mm fan to the top of the case right at the back above the CPU cooler set to exhaust. This dropped our CPU idle temperature down by one degree and our GPU temperature under load down by a further degree. Adding the extra fan at the top actually improved noise levels by two decibels at idle and one decibel under load. So based on my previous testing, in terms of adding the fans in, having only that fan at the back behind the CPU cooler set to exhaust is really where you want to have it. If you add three fans at the top, you're actually taking cooler away from the front of the CPU cooler and exhausting it out the top of the case. The only downside to doing this is that it doesn't look particularly great just having one fan at the top. So you're gonna to have to weigh up that slight improvement in temperatures over the aesthetics and again you're going to pay a little bit of extra money for an extra fan. The final air cooling configuration that I wanted to test and again sticking with the 340mm fans at the front set to intake and the 240mm fans one at the rear and one at the top set to exhaust. I added an additional three 120mm fans to the side of the case set to intake. In terms of our temperatures our CPU idled one degree hotter and our GPU was two degrees hotter under load. No significant difference in the noise levels with noise being one decibel less at idle and one decibel more under load. So summing up our thermal testing results, I think it's a case of less is more. You can get very slight benefits in terms of your temperatures by a few degrees by adding in lots of extra fans. Um, but BeQuad have done a good job in testing this case out. And I think if I was building in this case, the configuration that I would go for is the one that it comes in out of the box with just the two fans at the front and the one at the rear. And I would leave that noise dampening material on the top if I'm going with an air cooler. Wouldn't think about putting one down at the bottom because it doesn't help. And if you did want to add an extra fan then adding that single fan at the top set to exhaust or an additional fan at the front set to intake may give you some benefits. I probably would stay away from the side fans. In terms of aesthetics, I just didn't think that looked particularly good. And having the black panels on the side, I think looks much better. The other thing that I would probably consider doing is the Ida 64 stability tests are really extreme tests. You're not gonna hit those temperatures during normal use. Um, I would probably actually use the buttons on the front of the case and fix the fans probably in that second speed setting. So they're not ramping up and down when you're using your PC for normal tasks. I've currently got it set down to level one because I want to talk to you and you don't want any noise in the background distracting things. So if you're certain cases you want it to be quiet while you're maybe making a video call, you've got control to do that. So I think having the ability to use the buttons on the top of the case is a great feature as well, controlling the fans. And if I was building the PC, I would stick to the stock configuration with the air killer and use those buttons to keep the noise at a low level. So the last configuration that I wanted to test was adding an AIO in at the top. 
So I left the fans in exactly the same configuration as we had just done our last test in, where the only thing I had to remove the single fan at the top set to exhaust and replaced it with the Zeus's 360mm Ryogen 3 CPU cooler. So taking a look at our temperatures with the AIO or CPU idled 3 degrees cooler and the maximum CPU temperature was 4 degrees cooler under load. The maximum CPU temperature probably doesn't tell the whole story as this was recorded during the initial spike in CPU temperatures. After this, the 360mm AIO did an absolutely brilliant job of keeping the CPU temperature nice and low, where it ran somewhere between 80 and 84 degrees for most of the test, which is round about 15 degrees cooler than the air cooler was running for most of the test. And after the initial spike, there was no thermal throttling with the AIO. In terms of our GPU temperatures, our GPU was also 2 degrees cooler under load with the AIO. It shouldn't come as a big surprise that noise levels were worse with the AIO by 3 decibels at idle and 5 decibels under load. So you should be able to use these thermal testing results to decide how you want to build in the case. If you're going to be using your PC for lots of CPU intensive tasks for prolonged periods of time and you're going to be using a really hot CPU like I've used, really you are going to need to use an AIO. It is important to say this isn't just any ordinary AIO, this is a very expensive, really good AIO. And actually having the temperatures like this with the 13700K are really rare. Normally it will run up in the high 90s with a lot of other AIOs. So the temperatures I'm getting in this case with this cooler are excellent. The downside of that is it's going to be significantly more expensive to do than picking up the air cooler. And your build is going to run significantly more noisy as well. I do think this is the best looking build. You've got a lovely display on it with lots of useful information. And having the fans at the top set to white just really lights up the build as well. And I think this is definitely the best looking build. Although as the testing has shown, if you're using your PC for a gaming PC, you're going to be absolutely fine with the air cooler. It's not going to thermal throttle and your temperatures are going to be much lower than the Ida 64 stability test. And that is going to give you a much quieter PC and a much cheaper PC to put together as well. So hopefully in the thermal test now, I've given you a bit of an idea of what you should do with your case. So now I want to come on to my experience of building in the case and being such a large case where you can actually remove the motherboard tray with lots of space around it, it was a really easy case to build in. There is a couple of wee tips that I can give you um, into small areas I ran into some difficulties. The first was actually I decided to try and leave the cable management bar over to the right hand side of the motherboard and get my case cables plugged in. This made plugging the right angled USB 3.0 cable um, down at the bottom of the motherboard was actually pretty difficult with the bracket in place and I took it off and then put it straight back on again. The problem is then I struggled to plug in my 24 pin cable. So my advice to you is just take the bracket off at the start, get all your cables plugged into the right hand side of the motherboard and put the bracket on at the end. The other side issue I had with cables was that actually the case cables are quite limited in terms of their length. So just be careful the route you take with them at the back of the motherboard. Particularly the header is down towards the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. There was a bit of stretch on the cables at the back. And I didn't take the best route in terms of cable management. But it was the only route that the cables were going to reach without being under significant tension. So just factor that in when you're routing your cables to the motherboard. Final tip for building the case is, although it's great to be able to take the motherboard tray out of the case, and you can actually install your GPU outside of the case, I would probably avoid this. But it's really easy to install your GPU in such a big case. You're not really getting any advantage of doing it, but you are creating significant disadvantages in the fact that actually plugging your cables in is going to be much more difficult. And in fact, with a big GPU like this, it's going to be completely impossible to plug in some of the cables to the right-hand side of the motherboard with it already installed. So now I want to come on to the things I liked about the case and there's absolutely loads I like about this case. First thing, it's a big case, which I like personally. And the other thing that I like about it is I think it looks quite good. In particular, I like the solid aluminium panel on the front much more than the mesh, but it's good you've got a choice of both of them in the box. The other thing I really like about this case is the front I.O., particularly the buttons for controlling the fans and the ARGB. I think it works really well and looks really well too. As I mentioned, having that ability at the press of a button to reduce or increase your fan speeds 
And again, at the press of a button, go back to your standard motherboard fan curves without having to go in to the bias is absolutely brilliant. And at a time when you want to take a video call without your PC cycling up in terms of noise, really, really useful. Likewise, having the wireless phone charger on the top of the case is going to be really useful. Another thing I like about the case is the fact that it comes with three really good fans included. And as the thermal testing is showing, you don't need any more than this. Um, it lets the PC run incredibly quiet at idle, which is something that's really important to me. Another thing that I absolutely loved was having the fan hub built into the fan bracket, and this really simplified the building process. Another thing that I really liked in this case was the cable management. I think this is actually some of the cleanest cable management that I've done in any build, and it was really straightforward to do. It's also really nice that the GPU support bracket also hides your cables running to the graphics card. Another thing I really liked was the hard drive support in this case. It will accommodate up to seven three and a half inch drives or 16 two and a half inch drives. And because the hard drive cages blend in really well with the rest of the case, even having these installed in the main body of the case, your build is still gonna look really clean. Finally, having the option to invert the case is gonna give your build a completely different look and is gonna come in real handy if you prefer having your PC on the left-hand side of the desk. So now I want to come on to the things I didn't like about the case. And given that this is not a cheap case, it's currently around about £320 in the UK, it should be perfect. So we're going to have really high standards in what I expect with it. So the first thing I really didn't like about this case was the mechanism for securing these side panels. There's actually little cutouts here, and you have to get your panel lined up in a certain way with the cutouts and push it in. And then actually pushing the panel in was quite stiff to get the thumb screws in at the back. And certainly comparing this to a lot of other premium cases, I did think this was a little bit lacking. So while I've really praised the built-in fan hub with buttons to control the speeds at the front of the case and the RGB controls for the lighting strip on the front and on the side of the case, I felt that it was still a little bit lacking if you wanted to add additional devices into the build. So we take the ARGB for the start of it, there is absolutely no way to plug anything additional into those ARGB control buttons at the top of the case. They are only going to be able to control this light strip on the front and on the side. And if you had ARGB on your fans or on your CPU killer, there is no way to have those buttons to control it. Similarly with the fan hub, it's great that we've got one on the top bracket for three fans and one on the front bracket for three fans. If you do decide to occupy all three of those slots on the top fan bracket, you've got nowhere to plug in your rear fan unless you're going to use a splitter cable. Likewise, the side fan bracket, it's great to have it as an option, but that bracket doesn't have any additional fan hub to plug them in. So I really think what BeQuad should have done with this case is add an additional fan and ARGB hub at the back of the case, which was connected up to those front buttons. So you could plug further devices directly into that and allow you really to customize your build just the way you want it. It's also a little bit disappointing in a case in this price point that we don't have a reset button in it. I can't really understand why one wasn't included. And if we look at our front I.O. cables, these are actually separate cables, whereas a lot of even low to medium price cases now are including all these cables in one plug that you can plug directly into the header. So one thing that does worry me is using this GPU support bracket with a graphics card requiring a 12 volt type power connector, particularly a big graphics card like I've got here. And I do think it probably was more designed for the six and eight pin PCIe cables where you can actually bend the cables right the way down without any problems. Obviously a 12 volt type power connector, you're not gonna be able to do this. The cards are getting really, really big and they're already quite close to the temper glass panel. And if you then are to try and run the cable out straight and not bend it, the only way I could get this bracket to fit in is it actually sticking quite far out at the side. And there still is a little bit of a bend on my cable. So I would worry that if you're not as careful as I was with it and you actually just shove this all the way in, you could have a really steep bend on that cable that could potentially dislodge your connector from your graphics card and putting your whole build at risk of going on fire. So I'm not sure if there should be some sort of disclaimer here about using this only with the other PCIe cables rather than the newer 12 volt high power connectors, because I would have some worries about the safety of doing this. So now we're ready to stage the review, right? To tell you, should you go out and get this case? 
And while there's a couple of wee features in this I would really like to have been changed, particularly opening the RGB buttons on the front of the case up to allow you to control other things in your build and having enough fan hub connectors to allow you to plug other devices into it because the buttons on the front of it are just so good for controlling things. These are really only minor niggles and in general this is an absolutely brilliant case. It looks good, it's got excellent build quality, you're going to be able to fit loads in it in terms of your hardware and you're going to be able to fit loads of drives in it as well, particularly if you want to install lots of hard drives or SSDs, you're going to be able to do that. And importantly, it's going to run incredibly quiet and look good. I think in terms of the price, I think you probably are getting what you pay for it, given the fact that it's got really good fans and a good wireless charger for your phone on the top of it. So I can recommend it. I think this is a very, very good case. I think it was very close to being excellent and there had just been a couple of wee tweaks to it. It could be excellent, but it is still most definitely worth buying and I would be very happy with it sitting on my desk. So if you are thinking of doing a build in this case, I have done a full step-by-step -step build guide in it where I cover everything in lots of detail. So you are really gonna to want to check that out and I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this review, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.